Yeah, hello everyone. So hopefully this is going to be the last uh, chapter we will be discussing of the uh, of this uh, book blog, uh, Python for data analysis. So this chapter chapter twelve is on in, uh, inter introduction to modeling li libraries in in, in Python. Um, so it's uh, compared to the other chapters, it's relatively short. Short. Um, so in this in this uh, book, uh, the focus was on the uh, building the programming uh, fundamentals for doing data analysis in Python, and um, a lot of the work that uh, data analysis or data data scientists or data analysts will do. It's uh, uh, it has to do with data wrangling, uh, uh, data cleaning, data preparation, and and of course they will do some modeling, but uh, a, a bunch of their work has to do with data 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 cleaning and preparation. So uh, so which uh, libraries you use for developing models will depend on the, the, the application you are, you, are, you, are, you are using and and what you're interested in. And let's say uh, those are things that will determine the, the, the model you will, you, will, you will wanna use. So many uh, statistical problems can be solved using simpler techniques like uh, OLS. Um, and and you could also use some advanced machine learning techniques, which is, I mean, not what this book is for. So, yeah. Uh, so in this chapter, um, we're going to review uh, features of pandas that may be helpful when you are uh, crossing back and forth between data wrangling, data wrangling with pandas and model fitting uh, and, and and scoring. So uh, towards the end of the chapter, he will introduce uh, some popular uh modeling toolkits like the stats model and the 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 uh, the, the sky scikit line um these are some uh, especially the scikit line uh, the scikit line it's a, a machine learning library that he will introduce uh, at the end of the book um so he also uh, uh encouraged that you know to keep keep track of what is going on uh with these libraries and other libraries is, is a good practice to follow the documentation online. Um, he mentioned that to follow the documentation online. Yeah, so the first part is like interfacing between uh, pandas and the, the model. So uh, we use pandas for loading data and cleaning before switching over to, 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 to building uh, models or switching over to libraries that will help us build models. Which, uh, which is usually what we are interested with data. We just don't want to clean the data, but we want to uh, to build some uh, model uh, of the data and possibly depending on what we want. If, uh, if we are data scientists, we might be interested in predictions and, and stuff like that. Yeah, so an, uh, an important part of the model development process is called the, the future, uh, the future in, uh, engineering in machine learning. Uh, which uh, describes uh, data transformation and uh, analytics that extract information from um, raw data, well, which is uh, like similar to what we have seen in the previous chapters, like data aggregation and group by uh, methods. So, um, so like, uh, so basically, the workflow is like this: you start with pandas, you do some data manipulations, data wrangling, and cleaning, and then you want to then switch to do some modeling using, of course, the available modeling libraries. So he's, he's now trying to demonstrate how this works in, in practice. Uh, as usual, we develop a, a simple data frame, uh, which has uh, three columns, uh, x0, x1, and xy. And yeah, we, we see the, the data frame. Um, and these are the, the columns, and it's an object type. Uh, the type the data type is an object. object. So we can convert it to a NumPy. Um, object by using the to numpy method, and then it automatically converts it to numpy. So we can convert convert back to data frame by just uh, passing the two dimension uh, array option, and 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 specify the columns, and then it will be back to the original object. So to numpy is only useful when we are dealing with homogeneous. Uh, Data when you know the the the, the columns, um, um, like let's say at the same. But when we have different data types, then 
this to numpy method might not work. Like like this example where we have um, the the fourth column is a string, and then if you want to call the num the to to numpy, the data type will be an object. It will not be an uh, a numpy array. It will be a something else. So uh, he, he recommends that we use, uh, for some models, you may wish to use only a subset of the data, of, of, the, uh, of the data, let's say, or sub subset of some columns. So recommended using the, the iLock, the, the lock index we have seen before, where we, we specify the columns we want. Like we call, the, we use the, doc, the, the, the dot iLock method, and we specify the, the columns here. Let's say if you're interested in columns, X, X0 and X1, we can just specify that and convert that to a numpy array. Yeah, and that's it. So he also mentions how to deal with categorical data because uh, that's a, a problem. Um, uh, in, in So let's say if we want to convert categorical data to, uh, so in, in, in chapter 7.5 categorical data, we looked at Panda's categorical type uh, and pandas dot get dummies function. So uh, this is an example. We have this data. We add a, um, a categorical data where we have two categories, and this is it. So if we want to replace the category column with a dummy, we 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 create this by using the get dummy function, and then it creates a, a category, and then we could see the um. The, the categories and then we drop the actual this column and then we we, we get the category so there are some nuances uh, to fit in certain statistical models with dummy variables it may be simpler and less error prone oh so okay so that's why he's trying to show this because we will later we will see the the the, the patsy uh, uh, library so he's saying that this is more convenient to work with because especially if you are having you you have data, uh, dummy variables uh, in your in your in your data, then it's advisable to work with this. Yeah, I, I don't know so far if you have any comments. Uh, I think you you could just come in. You have any comments or you want to add something else? Oh, well, I so, think it's good. It's a uh, very straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. So creating model descriptions with the 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 Patsy, uh, library. So Patsy is a uh, uh, is a Python library for describing statistical models, especially linear models, uh, with a, a string-based formula syntax. So this is uh, described by the, the R programming language, although there are some a little bit of differences, but the, the basic uh, structure is similar to that of R. So we can install it by, as usual, as we install, the conda install uh, start model, starts models, uh, so it uh, starts, uh, this part C is well supported for specifying linear models. Um, so the focus, uh, some features. Um, so here he will focus on the main features to help us get, get up running with this part C library. So uh, this is a, an example of a, of a part C, uh, um, let's say a, a formula. So this, this plus does not necessarily mean uh, addition is just um, uh, sort of a, a, a part C formula. Um, so the, the syntax A plus does not mean uh, addition, but rather uh, these are terms in the design matrix created for the model. So in part C, we have what we call the, the design, the dot design matrix method, uh, which takes uh, a formula string along with uh, the data set, which uh, can be a, a data frame and it produces a design matrix for the linear model. So this is an example. Here we have a data frame, which is like this. So when we import a part C, because we import the part C library, um, and then if we call the dot design matrix, dot D matrix on this formula, we get um, the, um, sort of we get the, the 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 output for y and and also for x so we get the design matrix for y which is a, a five by one uh, matrix 
um, and, and also for x, which is a five by three matrix. And this is the uh, intercept, which is the, this is usually the case when we are dealing with uh, linear um, regression, we by default have the, the intercept and it is set to, to one. So we can, uh, we can convert it to this to a, a NumPy um, array by just calling as NumPy, as uh, uh, as array, and then it converts it to a NumPy object. Yeah, so we can hide the intercept. We can do that by just adding a zero to the formula, and then it will it will it will just hide the the intercept for us. That is the case where we are not interested with the intercept. We can do that. So we can also use this uh, part C object and do some. Uh, I mean, some, and we can pass it to the NumPy uh, linear sort of least square estimations and get some ordinary least square regressions um, like this, which we will get the, the coefficients, the residuals, and, and, and then, you know, that object, this Patsy object that we had created, we can pass it here and then we'll get some uh, OLS regression results with the um, with all the, the outputs that come. So this cough gives us, gives us the coefficients of the the, the the x y here in this case the axis will be the the let's say suppose the axis are independent uh, variable and y is the the dependent variable and then you know we have the coefficients and of course this one should be the constant and then you have the 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 coefficient for x and and also for for the y variable if so we could also convert it to a a, a series by calling the the pandas series and then it converts the the, the coefficients to a series. Oh, so so then this will this will be the sorry that's the that that's the intercept and this is x zero and that is x x one. So we can also use the the the, the formula, uh, this is transformation in Patsy uh, formulas. Uh, you can mix uh, Python code into your Patsy formula when evaluating the formula. The library will try to find functions. Oh, so okay. So, so basically what he's trying to say is when we call the, the D matrix, tries to evaluate this formula that we have here. So basically this formula is saying, okay, um, give us X zero, uh, but then take the log uh, uh, in absolute value of X one, add one to it, um, and you know, and then specify the data. So that's the data here. And so that's it, that's what we get when we call this. So what the D the, 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 the D matrix does, it evaluates what we have inside the bracket. So that's what we present it in there. So the output we get is a five by three matrix, where the, the force, the column zero, it's the intercept. And then we have X zero, and then we have the log of the absolute value of X one plus one, which is this. So if we wanted to hide the intercept, we just add plus zero here, and then that will hide the intercept. So we also have some some other common variable transformations where we try to standardize, which is we get, want to get a standard normal where we have the mean of zero and the variance of one, or we want to center the, the data by demeaning it, let's say by subtracting the, the mean. We can do all these things in part C by just putting everything in the bracket, calling the, 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 the design matrix for, uh, uh, method and um, putting the rest in, in bracket where we have standardized X zero like subtracting the mean from, like no, making the, the mean zero and the variance one, we can center X one by subtracting the mean from it. And then we specify the data we want this formula to be applied to. And then the data, it will be applied to that particular data. Yeah. So we could also fit the, the model. Uh, as part of the mo modeling process, we may fit the, uh, a model on one data set, then eventually uh, evaluate the model based on another data set. So this might bring up some issues. So when applying transformations like center and standardize, uh, we should be careful when using the model to form predictions based on the, the new data. Because if not, um, it, it will bring up some issues because we want to make sure that uh, um, the, when we are doing the standardizations, it is based on the original data, not the, the transform data. So 
um, so he said we can use the, the, the participle design metrics, which can apply transformations to new out of sample data using the saved information from the original in sample data. So so this method might be useful for that. And 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 now it's just giving us an illustration of how we can use the 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 the, the build build design metrics uh, method in the part C library, uh, which uh, which which is uh, basically when we call it, and then we specify the, the data, which is this new data, and then it uh, it, it does the standardization by using the, the information from the original in sample data. So because uh, in, in, in part C, uh, plus doesn't mean addition. So if you want to add, we have to use the I to indicate that we are adding, um, and like we are adding two variables. So that's why we have the I here, which indicates that we are adding um, um, X0 and X1. So part C has several other built-in uh, models, so which we can check from the documentation to familiarize ourselves with, with them. So now he, he shows us how we can work with categorical data and, and uh, part C. So non-numerical data can be transformed for a model design metrics in many different ways. So we can transform this in many different ways. Um, so, so you can use non-numeric terms in a part C formula. Um, so they can, so one, one, one way is to convert them to a dummy variable. Then, then once you convert them to a dummy variable, then you can use them. That is, that is the way he's uh, trying to show us here. So, um, so uh, this is an example uh, of where we create, uh, where, where sort of we convert the categorical variable to a dummy variable and use it uh, in the part C. Um, so these are uh, uh, data we create. Uh, we have key one, key two, and v1, v2. So we call the uh, the the D matrix, and yeah, v1. Uh, sorry, v2, uh, key one, and we get uh, eight by two matrix. Yeah, which uh, gives us the 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 intercept. And then it uh, uh, sort of give us the um, yeah the the key one it give us the key one but notice that key one is like uh, as categorical um, it's it categorical but so basically it's uh, it converting it to um, a dummy variable where zero is a and b is one. So that's why we have zero zero one one one. Yeah. So if we omit the intercept from the model, then columns for each uh, category will category value will be included in the model design. So like example here, if we remove if we add zero, it means we are dropping the, the intercept. So now then we'll have both A and B. A and B. Yeah. So this is A and and this is B for 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 key one, which is a categorical variable. But uh, but then in 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 part C we, we model it as a dummy variable. So we can also uh, we can also use a C function like this, and that will automatically. Um, that will automatically uh, interpret a numerical variable as a categorical variable if we call the C method. Well, when we are using multiple categorical terms in a model, things can be more complicated. Um, so at some point we might want to include introduction terms, which sort of, uh, basically interaction terms are interesting. They are interesting because you know they help us see the the combined effect of, let's say, uh, two separate variables. What what is their combined effect? So sometimes they're interesting. They are interesting to to work with them. 
So when you are working with categorical data, sometimes this this could be interesting. So it gives an example. You could be when you are using the ANOVA models, you can you can you you might want to work with interaction terms. So the same data, you know, we mapped the uh, zero and two zero and one to one. So we have the key two, uh, which uh, basically um, gives the the categorical variable, but in sort of it 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 it, it spells the instead of giving it numerical term, it makes it another categorical. So so we have Q1 and Q2 are both categorical. So we could model like this where we sort of we are we model them but both are separate variables without any interaction and we get this. We have the the key one and the key two. And then we could have a model wherein we we have the key one, the Q2, and their combined effect, which is the interaction term. So this is Q1, this is Q2, and this is their combined effect. Which, uh, depending on what type of uh, modeling we are doing, it could be very interesting to to have the sort of the 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 interaction term. Yeah, I, I mean, so far, if you have any comments or you want to add anything, yeah. So that's the third part of the chapter where we introduce the the stats model. So the stats model uh, is a Python library for fitting many kinds of statistical models performing statistical tests and data exploration and visualization. So it contains many, many classical like frequentist methods, but it, it doesn't deal with Bayesian methods and machine learning stuff, which uh, are found in other libraries. So the kinds of models in the start model includes linear models, the generalized linear models and robust linear models, linear fixed effects models, the analysis of variance and over mod methods, uh, time series processes and state space models, generalized methods of moments. So, so basically, um, we could see that it's the start models work fine with linear models. When once we start talking about non-linearity or machine learning or Bayesian, then the start model might not be ideal. So, in the next, in the remaining part of the the the, the, the chapter, he talks about the basics tools in the start model and explores and explores how to use the the modeling interface in part C formulas and pandas data objects. So since we have already installed the start model, so there is no need to do that again. So estimating uh, linear models. There, so there are several kinds of linear models in the start model. So we have the ordinary least squares, the iteratively weighted least squares, so, but, but, but for this illustration, we'll focus on the ordinary least square. Uh, so, the, so linear models in start models have two different main interfaces, uh, array-based interface and uh, a, a formula-based. So we can import the array-based interface by start model API as SM, which is the, the array-based, and the as uh, the SMF, which is the, the formula based. So, so now he's going to illustrate how, in what case we are going to use either the array based interface or the formula based interface. So to show how to use this, we generally, so we generally uh, create a linear model from a random data. So this is how, this is how we create it. So let's say, so we call the random gen uh, random gen number generation. So we set the seed for reproducibility. Then we use the normal distribution function. We have the mean, the variance, and the size. And yeah, so we set the sample size to be 100. And we use this uh, NPC underscore sort of to fill in the the columns, we fill in the, the, the columns for the X matrix, which is the matrix of uh, uh, of uh, covariate or the independent variables. And this will be the, the matrix of the the noise, the error term, 
and then the betas, we just set them up, which are the, the coefficients. The the inter the, the yeah the, the, the coefficients is the, the, the intercept and possibly the the x and no well, yeah so we, we set the betas and then this is how we get the y which is the mp dot we call the dot product so we take the dot product of x the x matrix and the beta matrix plus the error term yeah where here y is the 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 the, the dependent variable. Yeah. So so here he wrote the down the true model with non parameters beta. Of course, in in the in the actual world we want to estimate beta, but now he's just you know guessing and fixing some beta values because he's just trying to illustrate how the 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 interface works with. Uh, with uh, array based, yeah. So that is that will be the, the the first five entries of the 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 x matrix, and the first five entries of the y the y uh, matrix. So when we uh, fit the linear model, it it uh, by default it has the intercept. So but we can use the sm dot add intercept add, add constant to, to add the, the intercept if it is not there so when we call this method on x it gives us the it adds the intercept so the the, the sm ols class can fit an ordinary least square regression method. so when we call the 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 sm dot ols on x and y it basically runs a ols regression for us very straightforward so the, the, the model fits, the models fit method returns a regression results object containing estimated model parameters and object diagnostics. So results, we call, we, if we call the, the, the model dot fit and we assign it to the results, it gives us the estimation results. Then these are the parameters of, of, of the results. Yeah, which are the, the parameters of our, of our results. So when we call the summary method, it gives us uh, the summary of the results, which gives us the, the R squared, the adjusted R squared, the F statistics, the probability of the X statistics, the likelihood, the log likelihood, the uh, IKK and the, uh, the BIC, and it gives us the degrees of freedom. So basically it gives us the model of the statistics, which we usually have in our regression, regression table. Yeah. And gives us the coefficient, the standard errors, the t statistics, the, the p values, and also the confidence interval. So it's uh, I think this this is quite straightforward. Yeah, it's quite interesting. So we could also uh, the parameter names here uh, have been generic names like x1, x2, and so on. Suppose instead that all of the model parameters are in a data frame, wherein we have the parameters i some sort of columns. You have column zero, column one, column two. So when we call y, we see the parameters are all columns. So with this, we can use the 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 formula interface. In, because the previous example, he used the array interface. But if let's say our parameters are all in some 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 kind of a data frame, then we can use the the column uh, the the formula interface. In which case we will call we will call we will use the uh, smf dot ols method, wherein these are the, the three parameters and they are all they are all columns, and we we get the results like this and it's it's much more straightforward, uh, sort of. So so we can see how the start model has returned results as a series, uh, with uh, data frame column names attached. So, uh, uh, given new out of sample data, uh, we can compute predict predicted values given the estimated model parameters. So, so this are the, if we call the dot predict on data, it will give us the the predicted values of the first five entries of our, of our data. Uh, we can also uh, estimate in time series processes. Um, another class of models 
in start models for time series analysis. So where we deal with autoregressive processes, the Kalman filter and other time series kind of models. So it gives an, a, a, a simulation of a, a simple autoregressive process with wide noise, with, with, with noise, with error. So the initial, let's say we initiate a value is equals to four. So values, so we have init x, init x, we repeat it twice, the sample size, a thousand. So we have the coefficients of our parameters as um, we set them, 0 0.8 and minus 0 0.4. We set the, the noise, the error, as normally distributed with mean of zero and variance of 0 0.1. And uh, yeah. so we, we using this information, we build the, the, the time series data. So this data uh, is a autoregressive process of, of order two, that is with two lags and parameters are as follows. So when we fit an AR model, you may not know the number of lags, number of lag terms to include. So we can just fit the model and specify a particular lag term. So in this case, we specified the maximum lag of five because you know time series uh, depends on the past. The current information depends on the previous and, and stuff like that. So that's why we set the lag. So here to fit the model, we set the maximum lag to be five. So when we call the auto reg, uh, and supply the values and the value which is, which is the, the, the autoregressive data, the time series data we created and we give the lag which we set to five and then we call the uh, the model dot fit we can see the, the results of the, the parameters after the model has been fitted and estimated. The, so the, the, the estimated parameters in the results have the intercept first and the estimates for the, the first two lags. So these are the, uh, the estimates for the first two lags. Since we have set the maximum lag to five, so this is the remaining three lags. Yeah. Yeah, and now, like if you have any, any, anything, any comments, you know. Yeah, we move to the. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a kind of like a. Yeah, they actually providing the in terms of the linear model, they providing the two ways of the setting up the our fitting fitting model, like a array based, which is the more like a mathematical kind of a like a matrix based kind mm -hmm. of a uh algebra kind of approaches, and then uh the other one is the formula based, as you can see on the screenshot. So. Like uh, maybe in R, we usually, we actually use the more like a form, formula based kind of approaches like a SMF or LS uh, mm -hmm. did. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not sure because maybe mathematically array based approach is going to be more straightforward, but in a programming yeah. or coding purposes, I personally think that because I'm, I'm quite, I'm you and I usually familiar with the R. So mm -hmm. formula based is more like a straightforward to me. So yeah, but I don't know. So yeah. Mm. Yeah. So um, now it moves to the uh, the 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 sky psychic land. I think I think you 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 have some. Um, background in ma uh, machine learning or stuff like this? I don't know. Um, not in Python. Oh, I, okay. Okay. I do the study club in machine learning related to in R, but psychic oh. learning is uh, uh, it's Python, not yeah. my, yeah. But machine learning, I run some book. Oh. So yeah. Mm. yeah, I'm quite familiar with it yeah. in principle, but scikit yeah. is, uh, yeah, in Python is a uh, quite new to me. Yeah, so, uh, so scikit learn is one of the most widely used and trusted uh, general purpose uh, Python machine learning tool. I, I think I'm hearing this for the first time today when I was reading this, I'm like, wow, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> but but the, the stuff it, it does, 
it, it's quite interesting. I, I think it, it might work spending some time to learn more about it. Here, it just gives you just a basic, very, very, very basic, simplified introduction. Yeah. So it's basically a general purpose Python machine learning toolkit. So it has a lot of uh, selections for standard supervised and unsupervised machine learning stuff with tools for model selection and evaluation, data performance loading and, and stuff like this. So we can load it by calling the conda install scikit-learn. So it's uh, so um, in this section, he will give a brief overview, brief flavor of Sky Kitline API style. So Pandas integration with Sky Kitline has improved significantly in recent years, and so he 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 stressed this that he encourages us to check the latest documentations online uh, because he, he's like the, the the progress at which this libraries are growing is very fast. So to keep up with them, you, you constantly have to be looking at their documentations online. So as an example, for this chapter, he uses the classic data set from, uh, from Kaggle competition about passenger survival rates on the Titanic in 1912. So first we load both the training and the test data set using Pandas. So we, we, we use the dot read CSV as we have seen previously to read the train data and the test data. So we get the first four entries for the train data. We have the passenger ID, the survival, which is a dummy, um, and then the, the passenger class, the class where they were, the third class, first class, second class. We have the, the names, the agenda, the age, um, the, 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 is it the page? the ticket, the fare, and, and all that stuff. We, we have this information. So libraries like the start model and the scikit learn generally, they cannot, they don't accept missing values. So first we have to check whether they are missing values. If they are missing values, we have to deal with those ones because then if we want to work with missing value, it will create some error because this libraries, they don't accept missing values. So first we looked at the train data. We look whether there are missing values and we sum them up. So is is any dot sum we sum the missing values. So it seems like we have missing values only for the age, and also for the cabin, and also for the embarked. We have missing missing entries. So we'll have to figure out how to deal with this. Also for the test data, the same uh, variables have missing value: the age, the cabin, and the uh, and the fare. So so in stat uh, in statistics and machine learning examples like this one, a typical tax is to predict to whether a passenger would survive based on features in the data. So a model is fitted on a training. So, so the model will be fitted on the training data set and then evaluated on an out of sample testing data data set. So, so here we, we see that age, he chooses age as a predictor. But it, it, but each has missing values. So first we have to deal with the missing values. So there are many imputation techniques we could use. I think we've discussed this some time back. But here he decides to use a simple median of the training data set to fill in the, the nodes. So, so for the age, we just fix the, we just use the median age and fill all the missing age values with that. Um, so, so we do that for both the training and the test data. So that's how we get rid of the, the missing value. And then he creates another column is female and sort of he makes it uh, a dummy because here we could see uh, it's, a, it's a categorical. So he makes it a dummy. He makes it uh, a zero one. Mm. Yeah, so he does that and then um, so the, 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 we create, a, so then we decide on some model variables and create a number, NumPy array. So the, one of the variables we decide was the predictor. So the predictors could be the passenger class, whether it's a female or a male, and the age. These are the main predictors that we are going to use to determine whether the sort of the, 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 the passenger, that particular uh, person survived or not. The, the passenger class, 
the gender and the age. Oh, so we have the the train data set and the test data set. We convert we sort of we convert both of them to a numpy array. So these are the, the first five entries of the train data set uh, for X. And these are the first five entries of the train data set for Y. So he doesn't make any claim about the model, how good the fit of the model is. Uh, so, so we can use the logistic, logistic res regression model from Sky scikit-learn and create a, a model instance. So that's so we we import the logistic regression from um, uh, SKLAN linear model. We import a logis logistic re regression. So we set our model to logis logistic regression. So we can fit the model to the training data using the models fit method. So so the models dot fit we x train and y train, and then we we use the uh, logistic regression model. So now we can perform predict predictions in the data set using the model predict. So we do predictions using the model predict for the X test. And so, so these are the predicted values. So this guy, um, so the 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, that is whether they survived or didn't survive, survived, didn't survive, and stuff like that. So the, 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 so the true Y dot mean uh, so in practice, there are many other additional layers to, of complexity to to model training. So, but he just gives a a very a very very basic overview. So we also use some cross validation methods. Uh, so many many models have parameters that can be the tune, and there are techniques such as cross validations that can be used for parameter tuning to avoid overfitting of the of the training model. Yeah, and so he's explaining how you can use this uh, um, cross validation and and stuff like that to avoid overfitting the model. Yeah, I, I think uh, uh, that's it for mine. If you have something to add on this part, yeah, yeah, because uh, thank you very much for your explanation. But the thing is, uh, this is the machine learning process. So what it actually does is. In this case, actually, mm -hmm. they the file actually divide by the train and test the data set. And then uh, using mm -hmm. the train data set, we train the model by using the logistic regression. Cause uh, mm -hmm. our goal is uh, try to try to predict the uh, whether a passenger, mm -hmm. uh, passenger was about passenger or passenger it was survive or not. Yeah. Yeah. During the mm -hmm. during the event, and then mm -hmm. we we try to predict uh, that kind of a yes or no kind of a prediction by mm -hmm. using the age and sex as a predictors. Mm -hmm. And then another question we also testing is uh, that uh age and sex gonna be the good predictor for the as uh, predicting the death survival rate. Mm -hmm. So that's the training. And then we anyway we training by using the logistic regression and then using the test data set we actually do the testing the data so based on the, our training model when we changing the data into the test data set how predictive our model how strong our model predict uh, predict the uh, yeah, survival rate survival accurate. Rate, yeah mm. yeah mm. But sometimes we don't, sometimes in the case, in case of, uh, we don't have a test data set, we actually sometimes do the, what is called the cross validation kind mm. of approaches, like a splitting our training data to simulating the prediction. So we can try to, uh, try to splitting our data, mm. like in this case, like uh, C, C gonna be the, so regularization parameter is a C is 10. And then we can, oh, yeah. we can try to calculating the, calculating the that validation score, which means how, how predicted the model is depending on the, our splitting training data set. So we keep trying to iterating the validating the model 
by using the death splitting uh sample the data, sample the training data set. And then that's the end of the result for the that cost validation score actually show us that the the extent of the prediction power in our mm -hmm. in our logistic regression models. So uh, that yeah. score actually shows us about the okay in our model has the prediction power predictive predictive power of uh, maybe 77.58 percentage of the mm. uh maybe precision or accuracy mm. of the of the predicting the death survival rate when under the we know about the age or sex. Okay. So that yeah. also means that the uh, age and sex is gonna be the quite good predictor. Yeah. And the for, for the for the survival rate in the Titanic data set. Mm. That's the, also another thing we can find about the, this model. So this is a kind of a very simple example of the machine, how we can do the machine learning. And also when we try to do the cost validation, we sometimes using the the other the other types of the machine learning technique, like uh, in this case, we can also use in about the other than the logistic version. We can also use the maybe random forest kind of oh, okay. model. Oh. Yeah. Like oh. uh, depending on the our validate kind of the features, how uh, what's the survival rate gonna be the classified. So we can also use in the random forest oh. or maybe single vector model methods, etc. Or maybe we can also using the very simple or less generalized linear model regression other than the logistic regression. So, mm. And then we also try to test in the, those cost validation score across the model, okay? So depending on the what model technique we use, mm. how valid, how, how strong, what kind of a predictive power we gonna be have depending on the, what kind of a modeling, machine learning modeling technique we use for to analyze our data set, maybe Titanic data set in this field. So, okay, wow. I think that... That's interesting. Okay. Yeah, I I think that this is the end of the uh, study.